We go through this every time. Every time. Hello, everybody. What's happening on uh, Saturday night? Before the Saturday night eve, before we have church in the morning, and uh, we have a real via treat. Via online. Via <laughs> online. Yeah, I know. Via online, <laughs> social media. So it's a, kind of a great thing. Actually, it's greater than we even think about uh, when we think about online, being online. I know um, this past week um, I saw, I think it was Debbie Smith that presented this and uh, or, or shared this. Some of you uh, or posted it and uh, some of you saw it. Maybe you didn't see this, but I always want to read this little uh, thing that this uh, guy by the name of Johnny Johnson. I don't know who he is, where he's from, but I thought there was some good insight in here and I wanted to share that with you tonight. It says here, it says, in three short months, just like he did with the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything we worship. God said, you want to worship athletes? He said, I will shut down the stadiums. He said, you want to worship musicians? I will shut down the civic centers. He said, you want to worship actors? He said, I will shut down the theaters. He says, you want to worship money? He says, I will shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church? and worship me, he says, I will make it where you can't go to church. So take that, we're at home, right? So hey, go figure. And then he said this, uh, this very uh, famous scripture we hear quote a lot in St. Chronicles seven fourteen. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Remember that turn from your wicked ways part. That's a very important part of this verse. And it says, he, is, he said, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And then he made this last paragraph, his last statement. He said, maybe we don't need a vaccine. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of the world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only thing in the world that really matters, mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Pretty profound. It's, I think it's a, uh, it's a the truth. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's absolutely the truth because... Uh, we sure can't go to a baseball game and we sure can't go to a concert <laughs> nope. and uh, we got to just play a little music in our heads or whatever. So we have to do that. So anyway, we're here tonight, Saturday night. I hope everyone is doing well. It's good to have you guys coming online. It's good to see you. And I just want to kind of give you kind of a little some updates, what's happening tomorrow. Make sure you guys are up to speed on your social media skills. I want to kind of help you out with some of that there as well. Uh, but before I do, I just wanted to kind of read something uh, out of Matthew 28. Uh, and the reason I read that thing to you is because as I got thinking about that, uh, I had already been kind of thinking about that in, in the respect of our social media. You know, we're using social media. In fact, we're burning social media up. Uh, if you can believe it or not, we are burning it up. Uh, I'm talking about the whole world is burning up social media because everybody's at home, bored, nothing to do, especially the kiddos. And so they're up there playing all the games, they're on social media. Uh, and so uh, when I thought about this, uh, I meet with about four or five uh, peer pastors. Uh, I meet with once a month. And, uh, and, uh, and I think I've said this before, but uh, those guys, you know, a lot of them didn't do social media every day on Sunday, you know. And so, but we've been doing it at the Hills Camp. We're so blessed, so blessed to have Danny Bachman and different ones that have helped out and, uh, made uh, made the uh, uh, being able to use the camera to come to fruition so we can be online to minister to each one of you at home. So it's easy for us. I mean, we go to church, we turn on a switch, we get up there and we and it, and it happens, you know, so it's really good. And uh, Deneen and I, and I said before, we were online a few weeks ago, like we are right now, and we had like over 800 hits and uh, had people from Rio de Janeiro uh, were online. We had people from Canada, people from Belize, different ones from around the world, not just our folks right here, but all over the world. And so I got thinking about these four pastors who broadcasted for the first time last Sunday and uh, some of the other people that do. And I got thinking about, those are four pastors in this area. <laughs> what about every pastor that's in the United States of America, right? Right, I was a lot, there's a lot. So, so and I'm sure they were all scrambling because they want to connect with their congregation just like we do. We always want to stay connected to you. Uh, Church matters, you know, church matters. And we are the church, you know. Uh, see, we're not even in a building, but we're connecting online mm -hmm. because we are the body of Christ and we and we can, uh, you know, we have a kindred spirit between us because, listen, you know the same Jesus that I know. Amen. 
Amen. I pray that you know the same Jesus I know. And if you don't, you need to know Jesus like I know Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you in that. But I was thinking about all that and I was thinking about, you know, how Jesus kind of helps us to, he, get, he puts us on a mission. He has put us on a mission. And so a lot of times, you know, we say, yeah, we can't meet in church. But here's the thing, folks. And I want you to understand this. Online social media is amazing. I want you to think about this. If every pastor did what these pastors did last Sunday, and if we went online last Sunday like we did Sunday morning, think about it. you got like you got like the East Coast Atlantic time, you got Central time, Mountain time, Pacific West Coast time, you got all these time zones. Think about how much Jesus was preached on the internet, on the web last Sunday morning. And think about the far-reaching effect of that. And there, are, man, there are there are a tremendous amount of big churches that have some great high-quality stuff and uh, uh, equipment where they can really send it out there. And it's just, I think we just, I mean, I think I think last Sunday morning was probably the greatest evangelistic event that the world has ever experienced <laughs> since the beginning of time on the planet. I mean, there's no way. I mean, we're reaching thousands, of millions of people. And when I used to travel to Africa. Man, it was amazing because I would go into huts to go get a Pepsi to drink off the flight line that was in Zaire somewhere. And uh, it was kind of a dusty dirt pit of no place where I didn't want to live. But there were people in there and there was like a little store, a little uh, shack, I would say. And uh, everything was dirt floor, thatch roof, open air, filthy, dirty, flies everywhere. And uh, there'd be one light bulb hanging in the middle of the room, you know, in this hut. and. It was just an amazing place, but I was hot and I was thirsty and uh, I could trust by getting a bottle of Pepsi because I knew it was made in a factory, so I would order up a bottle of Pepsi. But here's the thing I noticed. When the thing I noticed was, is that they didn't have much, right? But I noticed that most of all the people had cell phones. And so I was like, <laughs> dude. And I asked the guy, I said, man, like, who do you talk to way out here in the middle of nowhere on a cell phone? You know, it's all... Oh, yes, oh, yes, we talk to, we see United States of America, we see different countries, we see different people, we talk to people in faraway places, and I'm like, wow, and that was back in, in the late 90s and early you know, 2000, and so here we are today, 20 years later, you know, go figure, and listen, tell me, listen, I've heard of people in Belize back in the villages down there, living in their homes, they might not have had any kind, anything at all, <clears throat> but they finally got electricity run to their hut. They'd have a TV or, and they'd have cell phones down there too. There are towers everywhere. So you can reach people. We used to talk with people from the States who were going to mission field down to Africa and Kenya and different places. And you can still talk to them online. And so it's really incredible uh, thing that we can do worldwide. And I believe that uh, last Sunday morning was a tremendous evangelistic event. I believe even now, as we do this even now, it's reaching so far and we don't really, we, we won't realize on this side of heaven. The, so I just want to encourage you that, um, listen, just stay connected, stay with us on social media, uh, spread the love of Christ as far as you can do that. Uh, share Christ with uh, and your testimony or whatever it is on social media, do that, do that. You never know who is going to, uh, I mean, call your friends, invite them to come on when we do little things like this. It's just really an impactful thing and be impactful. And I was thinking about, because it's our mission, right? It's your mission, it's my mission. We know in Matthew 28, uh, Jesus said this. Uh, he gave, uh, after his resurrection, after he'd been walking with the disciples for a period of days, uh, he's, before he leaves, right before he leaves, he makes a statement to them. And he says to the 11 disciples, he said the 11 disciples in verse 16, traveled to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. And it wasn't just 11 disciples. I believe the 500 people that we see in 1 Corinthians 15 that Paul talks about are on this same mountain. And I believe when you look at the, the end of the book of Luke, you see where Luke talks about that, you know, he had directed them to this mountain and then he was caught up in the air. And I think this is all the same time, the same place, the same things that are happening here. He said, when he said, he said, he said, 11 disciples traveled to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. He said, when they saw him, first thing they did, they worshiped him. Why not? He's resurrected. He's come from the dead. I'll be worshiping the guy that's come from the dead, right? So he's worshiping him. But, but there were some that doubted, right? And, but there were some that doubted that were in their midst, right? And it, then he says in verse 18, then Jesus came near and said to them, don't you like it when Jesus comes near us in our time of need, right? When yes. we sit down and 
We hear a song like yesterday morning, I was doing my devotion and Jesus came near me and my heart and I just, it just blessed my soul, you know? And so Jesus blessed to come near to us. And he said to them, and this is what he said, and I thought it's very impactful. He said, he said, all authority, not some authority, but all authority has been given to me mm-hmm. in heaven and on earth, right? And he says, he says, so, and then he says, go therefore and make disciples, make disciples what? of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, right, to observe all that I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So that's why, that's why, that's just, you know, that's just, that's, this is what Jesus is doing. Jesus is doing this and it's just an amazing thing. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to make much of Jesus. Just, just, want to, just want to encourage you to make much of Jesus. Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but by him. So uh, just be encouraged. And, and I want to ask a question. What was the disciples' motivation to preach? What caused them to come out? From pre- to, to preach the good news. I mean, listen, it had to start with them, right? He tells them to go into what? In Jerusalem and wait, right? And Acts 1.8, he says, he says, and he, and he tells them that. He tells them to go in there and to wait in Jerusalem until the one is coming after me, right? So what was the disciples' motivation to preach? Number one, you could probably remember this, personal experience with Jesus. Hmm. Listen, they walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They saw the miracles. They walked with him. Come on, they walked with you. They saw him when he crucified. They run. They they turned tail and and hid in a room, you know. And then Jesus comes and shows up to them. All of a sudden, they get all bold and everything because he really was and is the Messiah, mm-hmm. who rose from the dead. He did exactly what he told him he would do. Right. And so here he comes and shows up. Well, again, these these Frady cat disciples come out of their room, right? They come out of their room, all of them, and they begin to proclaim that he is risen and that he is risen. And you look at Peter's uh, sermon, you look at James and uh, James and what he preached, you look at Stephen and all the different things that he said before he was stoned to death. Listen, they were preaching the Messiah, Jesus Christ, emphatically came. He appeared to 500 people. So personal experience was huge. Personal experience, they you know, went with a part of their soul, the transforming work of hope within their heart and life. It, that hope was transformed inside their life when they saw the resurrected Savior. Number two, the promise of his presence. This is another reason they preached, because of the promise of his presence. He said, all authority has been given to me, where? In heaven and earth. Jesus said that. And what did he say? He says, I give this authority to all of you mm-hmm. to go and preach and make disciples. So he gives us the authority, the power within. And the third thing, which is how he does that, he gave us the promise of his power. We have his power, the dunamis power. That's the Holy Spirit that's within us, right? Amen. Total dependence on God is what it requires of us. We totally depend on him. To, uh, we do what Jesus wants. That's what we do. We love him and our focus, listen, it's not on me, but it's on who? It's on Jesus every time. Mm-hmm. That's why he said in Acts 1, 8, he says to go to Jerusalem and wait for power from on high. He said, he said and you will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, Samaria, uh, and, the, and Judea, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And so that's what we're doing. This is why this kind of hit me today because I'm sitting here thinking about this. I'm thinking about what we're doing on social media. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the one who came, the one who mm-hmm. lived, the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave, mm-hmm. the one who takes the sting away, the, mm-hmm. the one who just gives us everlasting life. Jesus, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And listen, folks, he's coming back soon. He's coming back soon for us. And for us who are ready, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But listen, there are many that aren't ready. Yeah. And listen, and that's our mission. Our mission is to teach them about who Jesus is, to go out to the world and make disciples. We can't save them, but listen, we can tell them the story of Jesus. They can get saved, and then we can instruct them in the Word of God. And if we do that and teach them the Word of God, then they too can turn around and take the Word of God and use it to reach others who don't know, their friends and stuff. That's how it works. It's like, you know, Amway didn't invent the networking deal, right? They didn't. I mean, Jesus is the one who did it. He started with 
started with one. And they started asking these guys to follow him. And they followed him. And it took these 11 guys to go out and share Jesus. And guess what? And then, and then they kept building up, building up. I think about Polycarp. Polycarp was a disciple of John who was burned at the stake. And the tradition has it that when they put him at the stake and set him on fire, that he wasn't burning up. And they said that, and they said tradition says that they that the that the soldier took a, a a sword and pierced his heart, and he said that his blood extinguished the fire. And but he died. I mean, but he died. But he died for his faith in Jesus Christ. Look him up, Polycarp. It's interesting, interesting character, interesting disciple of uh, John, and uh, you'll find. And so that's how it spread far and wide. Come on, folks. We've been through Acts. We've been almost all the way through Acts, and we can see how the church is growing. Talk about serious networking. Hey, listen, God knows what he's doing. He invented networking, right? Mm -hmm. And he uses us to do it. We're the mouthpieces for his message. Mm -hmm. And so make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. So enough with that. But listen, I want to encourage you tomorrow at 1030. Listen, we have a special service for you tomorrow. It's going to be so awesome. I met Brian Norman. Brian Norman, listen, he is the founder and president of Early Earth Educators. And listen, Brian and his wife, Virginia, now she won't be there tomorrow, but we're going to have them back at a later date where both of them do it. Together, what they do is they show how the Bible and science always agree. Mm. They always agree. The Bible and science always agree. And so, and so we will see, we will see, listen, uh, we will see this demonstrated tomorrow uh, when Brother Brian talks to us about early earth and different things and, and what he's going to talk about tomorrow. And I don't want to be a, have a spoiler, but he, he is going to talk about Lucy Bones, the Lucy Bones, remember? Well, listen, I want you to tune in tomorrow. It's going to be educational. It's going to be very good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And so I just want you to do it. Now, listen, if you're going to tune in and you're having trouble tuning in, let me tell you, there's two ways. And I, can, I thank the Lord for Danny and what he's been doing. But there are two ways that you can tune in. All right. One way is you can go to our church website. Our church website, if you write it down, it's the Hills Campus. That's all one word, thehillscampus.com. Go to thehillscampus.com. At the top of the page, you will see, a, uh, you will click on it, on it. There's a tab at the top. It's actually words. It says the Hills Campus Live. You can look at it tonight and it says the Hills Campus Live. And you can practice tonight. So open it up. Go to and, and, and go and uh, type in the hillscampus.com and then it'll open up to our page. When you open up to the page, look at the top. It'll say Hills Campus Live. Click on that. And when you click on that, a picture of our church will come up. Click on the picture of our church and it will take you straight to our YouTube channel where it's going to be broadcast live tomorrow morning at 1030. All right. So that's one way. The other way is some of you already do it on Facebook. If you guys uh, type in to the, at the top of the search and you type in Hills Campus Cornerstone, Hills Campus Cornerstone, it'll bring up the Hills Campus Cornerstone on our Facebook page. Just go to it, like it, and listen, and you're in. Uh, so that's two ways. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on our own webpage, our own webpage, thehillscampus.com. So that will help. So listen, make sure you do that. And listen, practice it tonight. Look, at, look for it tonight. Uh, if you have trouble with it, send me a text, send me a messenger message or something like that, and I'll help you with it. I'll help you so you can get it because you can pull it up tonight and know that it's there, okay? So I just want to encourage you with that, all right? Is Off. that a countdown clock? <laughs> well, it's kind of like a countdown. It just shows how many, yeah. it shows like how many hours <laughs> till the time, <laughs> till, till, uh, till the show starts, right? So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, it's just there. But listen, we love you guys. I know we've talked to many of you um, uh, by by phone and calling you. We know this is very difficult. I've heard that there are like 14 people now affected in our county uh, with this uh, virus. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in different places. Different churches are doing different things. Uh, I'm trying to stay as close and adhere with what our government is telling us to do. And, and there's two words, right? What is it? Say it stay. with me, stay home, oh. <laughs> right? So they're telling us stay to stay home. home. So we're staying home and we've been staying home. It's hard for me. It's hard for us to stay home. So anyway, <laughs> but we're staying home and uh, we're just trying to spend that time with the Lord, praying, uh, listening, reading, uh, watching movies. We do that too. And so listen, just want to encourage you. Listen, we're all in this together. Don't give up, all right? Jesus is coming through. If you have a need, 
please, man, reach out to us. Let us know you have a need so we can help you with that need. Uh, pray for Sherry Butler. She's in a place here uh, locally and it's just a living place and she's there. Just, just, we just cover your prayers for her. Uh, and there's others as well. And I, I, you know, and just pray for our whole congregation, right? And so we just appreciate each and every one of you and what you guys do continually. Uh, listen, uh, as far as the tithe checks, so I just mail them in. You can bring them by Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, 10 to 2. Uh, you can uh, do online giving. Uh, Sister Cena told me that some of you did online giving uh, with at the corner dot church, and then the Hills campus is under the giving tab. So just to, we encourage you uh, to just do what God leads you to do. Uh, but above all, man, just be prayerful, uh, be vigilant, uh, be mindful of those. I think about those who have family members that lost their lives to the virus. Uh, we have one, I think, here in our county that actually passed away. Yeah. Uh, be mindful of these people that are hurting right now. Our whole country, the world is hurting. But listen, God has allowed this stop to take place so that we can take time out, just like this, to look up and know where our help comes from. Yeah. Our help comes from what? Comes from the Lord, right? right? Comes from the Lord. So anyway, you got anything you want to add to your ladies there? Miss you guys. <laughs> um, I'm working on maybe trying to get a, a Zoom meeting for us so that we can continue Ooh, and Zoom. maybe be able to see the video because we haven't yeah. been able to see that. So just keep your eyes open. Look for a word from me mm -hmm. that uh, we may lead to that because I'm trying to fix that up. I'm going to work on that um, with somebody else on Monday to get that set up for us. But I'll let you know. That's keep you right. posted. So, hey, we're in this together. Uh, be watching tomorrow. Uh, just uh, invite your friends to watch tomorrow. Tell them how to get online and to watch. And uh, it'd be amazing, man. We had Rio de Janeiro watching. We had Belize was watching. Canada was watching. All over oh, different yeah. parts of the country <laughs> was watching. So it's really cool. And listen, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, we came from North Carolina. Well, you know what? They're under complete lockdown. Their families are not allowed to leave the house for 30 days. Stay at home order. Stay at home for order, groceries. except for groceries. Mm -hmm. So listen, I feel that it's coming for us as well. So we need to think about stay home. Just stay home. Don't allow that virus to get to you. If you need somebody to go get some groceries for you, call us. We can do that. We will do that. And especially those of you I know that are homebound, let, let us help you, all right? Mm -hmm. Don't go out. Please don't go out and do that. We're here to help you, okay? Let's pray together. And before we say goodnight, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, all authority has been given to you in heaven and on earth, all authority. And you tell us to go and make disciples of all nations, Lord. And that's what we want to do, God. We want to be that light and that salt, Lord, to the world that's lost and dying. Jesus, we need you more than anything else. We need you to sustain our life. We need you to help us through this life. But Lord, we as Christians mm -hmm. have that hope within. God, we have hope. We know, God, that no matter what happens, God, that we have a home in heaven that's created not by human hands, but by the hands of Almighty God, you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, God, that we have a home to go to. We thank you, Lord, that we have an eternal place of solitude, a place of rest, a place of love and joy and happiness and no more hurting, no more crying, no more pain, no more tears. All those things, God, that you have prepared for those who love you, Jesus. And we love you with all our heart. But Lord, what breaks my heart, what breaks my heart of all the people that are scared to death of this disease. And Lord, it's only because they don't have any hope in you, Jesus. They need hope. And Lord, we need to deliver the hope. The inoculation is Jesus. It's not a vaccine. It's just Jesus. And Lord, help us to do that. And help us, Lord, to do it. Because Lord, you said this is, this is, in a, temp this is a temporary world and a temporary world place and in time Lord it's all temporary and Lord it's going to be it's going to be gone in, in a blink of an eye Father Lord and there's a lot of things that transpires a lot of things I believe you're setting the stage for your soon return Jesus for your people and so Lord it's my heart for those that may be out there that don't know you as Savior God that they would say Jesus come into my heart save me from my sinfulness my sinfulness was my lying my cheating my stealing my cussing whatever anything that's as opposite of the character of God is called sin. Even if you're speeding in your car, that's sin. And God wants us, Lord, to, to, to give that sin to you. Jesus, you took it from us on the cross 2,000 years ago. We just need to believe that you did that for us 2,000 years ago. 
And so, Lord, there might be somebody out there that doesn't know you, Lord. Save them tonight. Get them to, to just to humble their head right there in their living room, wherever they're at, on their device, and just say, Lord Jesus, I'm scared like Brother Phil's saying, and, and it's because I have no hope. I really doubt. Like some of these disciples doubted Jesus, you know, even after he resurrected and appeared to them. It says some doubted. But, Lord, we don't have to doubt. And, Lord, when your Holy Spirit comes inside, Lord, we know it. It's factual to us because we experience the living power of God and dwelling inside of our chest, inside of our being, our gut of who we are. And Lord, and, and Lord, I can see it by the way he transformed my life. He changed the direction of my life forever. <coughs> so God, I pray if somebody out there has never trusted you, that right now they just ask you to come into their heart and save them. And Lord, you promised to be there to save them. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that may have done that. I thank you for my Christian brothers and sisters. They don't need to be scared about anything, but they need to just pray. Whenever you get scared, just pray and say, Lord, pray with thanksgiving in your heart. Let your request be made known to God. And he says, in the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and all your ways. So Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all our folks. Mm -hmm. I thank you for watching out for us, protecting us from the evil one. No matter what happens, Lord, you protect us every time. And Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for a great awakening. I thank you for the evangelistic event that took place last Sunday. It's continuing on worldwide through the social media. Lord, technology. Lord, what Gary Beeler told me that years ago, he always wanted to know 50 years ago how God was going to do and reach the four corners of the world. And now we're experiencing what they preached by faith back 50 years ago. Lord, today we're preaching by experience, literal experience today. Lord, that's all because it's a divine movement of God. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing. Give us sweet rest tonight. Let us know we're resting in the hands of a living Savior that guards our hearts and minds and all the way. And Father, I give you praise for it all. Lift up Sherry Butler to you, God, that you touch your soul, touch your life, touch your health, touch your mind, touch your lungs, touch everything about her, Lord. Lord, touch many others, Lord, that are out there that are having a hard time. Continue healing them, Father. Bless those families who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. And Lord, that are grieving during this time. They can't believe that this has happened. And Lord, be the God of all comfort for them. Lord, bless our leaders of our country and the world leaders, God, that you have them to turn their eyes towards heaven to get the answers that they need and get the strength and power that they need that only truly comes from you. And Father, we give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said what? Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining in with us tonight. We love you all so much. Miss you guys we're too. We sure we miss you. Oh, I'm telling you. I think when we come back, we're going to have dinner on the grounds or something. <laughs> we're going to do something together. And we're going to celebrate Jesus together as we break bread with each other and with him. All right? Love you all. See you Amen. in the morning. Bye-bye.